All right, bear with me. We're coming into the home stretch in this chapter, and I know it's a very long chapter. I told you that. There are some consumer protection laws that will be enforced in this financing, okay? And it's going, going it came, comes from the Dodd Frank Act. Back when that whole mortgage meltdown, there were some uh, consumer laws that came out to protect the consumer against abusive credit. Uh, and abusive lending. We will spend a whole chapter on those or a part of a chapter talking about that. Another thing that comes in is this homeowner's insurance, right? That's the fourth thing. This is the last I in pity. We talked about the principal and interest in the form of those loans. We've talked about the taxes. Now we're talking about the insurance. And in your book, I believe there is a list of basic things that are covered in homeowner's insurance. And there is a list for the broad form. I will tell you that someone has told me that on the exam, there was a question as to which one of those are covered in which form. Okay. So you might want to go in and look at those just to see. Now, you guys know how to memorize two forms, right? Here's the easy way, memorize one form, and if it's not on that form, guess what? <laughs> it's on the other one, okay? Now, there is this thing called the Comprehensive Loss Underwriting Exchange. Clue, it's a database of payouts, and every insurance company in the world uses the same database. It is so that someone cannot make a claim on their homeowner's insurance, go out and get a new homeowner's insurance, and forget that they made a claim last week, and try and make another claim on their new homeowners. Because that first homeowners will register inside of this database that 12 Smith Street got paid out 10 grand for a new roof so that if they try and do it again the second insurance company is going to look and go hey dude uh flow from progressive paid you out two weeks ago what are you trying to do this prevents uh what's the word i'm looking for i just lost it this prevents insurance fraud prevents insurance fraud it comes to play with us so that when the buyer looks at a property and goes, hey, there's a new roof that's going to be need to be put on it. We can determine if that homeowner actually claimed the money but didn't fix the roof. That, too, is insurance fraud. And I have been involved in several of these where our home inspector says, man, there's that roof is damaged. And then we talk to our, our insurance and our insurance guy looks at the database and goes, hey, there was a payout for a new roof just two months ago. So now you as the selling agent working with the buyer get to go to the other agent and go, hey, man, where's the new roof on that? You better have a new roof put on that or you better give me the money because your client claimed it, got paid out and has now committed insurance fraud by not fixing the roof. So we do use this database to some extent in that transition from new uh, homeowners between the buyers and sellers. If your house is in a floodplain and requires this flood insurance, and this is not a decision that you make, it's actually already designed Every county in the United States has a floodplain and it will tell you this property is in the floodplain or it's not. If it is in the floodplain, you are, may have to get a separate insurance policy called flood insurance. Now, flood insurance typically is only underwritten by one company or one entity, FEMA the Federal Emergency Management Administration. FEMA is the one that writes all of the flood insurance. And flood insurance is in place to protect your property from these areas, like overflow or tidal waters. 
unusual or rapid accumulation of runoff, like large rain amounts, mudslides, or the collapse of land along a dam. Those are what cover flood insurance, and should one of those happen and destroy your property, you would then hit the flood insurance policy to get reimbursed that flood insurance. When it comes to the policies, there are two types of policies that a client or a consumer could get. The first one is called the replacement cost and the other is actual cost. So let's look at this for a second. Actual cost is, hey, I bought something for $5,000 five years ago. It now got damaged and I want to make a claim, but the insurance company is going to say the actual value of that property now is only 3000 and that's what we will reimburse. The difference will come out of that claimant's pocket, all right? as opposed to this replacement value. They bought something five years ago for 5,000 and it got damaged, but the value of it today is still 5,000. Therefore, the insurance covers it all and nothing comes out of your pocket. This is the replacement value. So one pays the actual value of that entity in today's dollars, and the other actually replaces it completely. So here's the question. If these two exist, why, would, why wouldn't everybody just use this one? Why wouldn't I just get something that replaces all of it right away? Well, the obvious answer to you is the cost of that policy. And the cost is called a premium. How much do you pay for that policy? Now, I am going to make these numbers up, so don't ever say, well, Raymond said that. No, these are made up numbers, but you're going to get the point. So the cost of the actual policy might be $50 a month for that insurance policy. But the cost of the replacement policy may be $100 a month. So you're saving $50 a month by using this one. And now what happens when it happens and something happens and you have to pay that $2,000, it's going to come from the savings that you have been putting in the bank all of these months. And I am sure everybody out there has a bank account set aside called insurance premium difference, right? <laughs> Nobody has ever said yes to that. But think about it. That's literally where that 2000 would come from. And if you were smart enough to figure this, and there are people out there called actuarialists that do this on a daily basis, you could think, well, what is the time frame between it breaking or me needing a new one and that cost difference and dividing it between the premium price difference and realize that it's cheaper for me to pay the full price because I'm going to get tagged with a huge bill if I pay the actual, or maybe it's the other way around. And if you don't understand that, it's not a big deal because that's really not questioned on the exam. All right. That's literally how they determine what your premium is. What's the time frame that the roof is going to go bad? What is the cost of that new roof? And they kind of break that down into a monthly payment versus okay, it's going to depreciate so much in those number of years. Therefore, the amount is different. I don't want to beat that horse because that's the least important thing in this exam or in this chapter. All right. So this is 
uh, the end of this chapter. All right, so that's the financing chapter. It's it's pretty in depth, right? I told you guys that it was going to be a long chapter. There is a lot of information here that you need to understand just from a basic concept and if nothing else to pass the exam, all right? Typically, once you start getting into that minutia about certain things, um, that's when you're going to pull in your mortgage loan broker that you know and go and say, hey, I need you to talk to my client and explain this. All right. So I thank you for joining. And what the next chapter is, is more financing. Right. Well, this wasn't enough. You got to learn more. Well, the next chapter, we're actually going to talk about the government involvement in some of these loans. You notice we talked about those special, those types of loans. What we didn't talk about was FHA loans or USDA loans or VA loans, because those are coming in a future chapter dealing with the government involvement in the loans. Once again, I suggest you do problems right down here. Um, in the back of your ebook, there are questions that you should do. If you have any questions at all about this, please feel free to email me at Raymond at realuniversity.com and I will see you in the next chapter.